Another unhinged conservative what is your movie problem, trailer. Flag? That's not my flag. That's your flag. Too many lies have been told to my people under the shadow. What the fuck? This is from eight months ago. And also, what is the color correction on this? I don't know what the fuck they did here. I don't know that flag. I want you to take it down. From where? Your truck. My truck, my flag. Some people find it offensive. What if I find them offensive? You're going to take them down? Well, why not take the, the anti Mexico I filter? Like the old trick. Yeah, my this is the exact opposite of the Mexican filter, where it's like, <laughs> it's like this is America, goddammit. it! <laughs> this is not Mexico. No sepia tones here, brother. Road two, Marty. I know, but there are other roads. Come on, I got a shotgun. It seems to me some things are worth losing your job over, Maggie. Not to me. Fourth of July is over. Take your flag down, old man. It's always Fourth of July at my house. Let the grass still grow. And the water run. I told you what would happen the next time you touch my flag, Tano. What are you going to do with that gun? Don't get out of my yard. You'll find out. And I can identify with Mr. Quinn's position on this matter. Why the hell is everybody so damn worried about losing their jobs and so little worried about losing their freedom? Next time, I'll cut a donut in your damn living room. Touch my flag again. In fact, that school is where I learned to say the Pledge of Allegiance in the first place. Indivisible. But you live under it now. I live next to it. There's a difference. Do you drink up enough nerve to tell me to go to hell yet? Do us both a favor and take the new road in and out of town from now on. It hurts me as much as it does you. Somehow I doubt that, man. I'm going to file the restraining order for the school. Against me. Crazy old man. With great displeasure and embarrassment that I find in favor of the plaintiff, in this case, Miss Quinn. You're going to jail, Quinn. No kidding. Somebody ought to put that dog down, put her out of misery. Somebody ought to put you down, put you out of my misery. I'll call the cops. Get the dog in jail. Actually, I'm not planning on being around that long. I have a right to take a knee. Call freedom of speech. You don't have a right to no squat. You gave that up the second your knee hit the grass. Why don't you just Kyle the wants to get on it. Much? Kyle, get on it. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Hold on. She's on it right now. Come on, Kyle. Go run, run, run. 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 Oh, she jumped off of it. Come on. Get on it. Oh, no. <laughs> she did not like it. <laughs> Let's make it slower for her. Hold on. Let's put it at one speed. She did not like that. Get this dog treadmill for Kaya. This pup couldn't wait to use what his treadmill. Deal, oh, that's like the crazy ones for pit bulls. What, you want to run or something? <laughs> oh, no. What the fuck? Okay, that dog loves that fucking treadmill. Oh my god, it'd be so sick if I could get Kaya to do it like that. Holy shit. Okay, let's get back to this god dang to die for. Would it surprise you to know that I fought for your flag? Very much. Mommy, why we did this again? Not even Afghanistan makes it any less your flag. Doesn't it? Ah! There's drama. He shot the flag I was down. To That's why I sacrifice my life for your right to take a knee. What are you willing to sacrifice for my right not to? Cineflixdod.com horrible movie is a conservative's wet dream. I have a right to take a knee. It's called freedom of speech. Just got your knee right up your The film's called To Die For, and it's one of the most hateful and out-of-touch movies that I've ever seen in my life. Which movie's a train wreck. I agree with the message the movie was portraying, but the delivery of the message was so was a complete turnoff and overshadowed true patriotism. Oh, you got... This is one of my favorite types of conservative commentaries or conservative criticisms that other conservative works of art receive. Uh, it's usually when they look at conservative works of art and go, 
Uh, not conservative enough for me. It's my favorite. Like the Gina Carano films that the Daily Wire has produced. When they realized, when they realized like that Gina Carano is a woman, they were like, well, why are you running the Hollywood ass narrative that like a woman can be more powerful than men? Like that's what Daily Wire's audience was doing when they got mad at the Gina Carano shit, which I personally think is awesome. We first meet our main character, Quinn, walking outside to get the newspaper when he notices an article about a local football player taking a knee during the national anthem. So Quinn decides to attach the American flag to the back of his car, blast the national anthem, and drive around the local high school oh, every wait. single- I'm sorry, that's fucking awesome. What? Is that guy wearing a Rode microphone jacket? A Rode microphone varsity jacket? How is that- What the fuck is going on with this movie? I love it. ...day like a- an idiot! Soon we get this amazing joke about black coffee. I thought black coffee mattered. And then we find out that only beta liberal soy boys drink lattes. What the hell is a latte? Eventually we meet this guy who Quinn just refers to in offensive Native American slurs throughout the entire movie. Other topics in the film include global warming. Get that global warming piece of trash off my lawn. And here I thought all of you liberals started calling it climate change because it was so Cold. The vaccine. I wouldn't get that shot with Baldwin's arm. And the Pledge of Allegiance. You haven't said the Pledge of Allegiance at this school in 15 years. But problems arise after Quinn is issued a restraining order from the school to stop harassing them. Now, if I can't drive with a flag on the back of my truck near this school, who the hell can? In retaliation, our hero paints the American flag on the front of his house. But soon after, the kid that took a knee swings by and sees it. Fourth of July is over. Take your flag down, old man. It's always Fourth of July at my house. It's pathetic. So he decides to crash a car into. It's always 4th of July at my house. Bars. Dude, let me tell you something. This is the- Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I almost fell. Let me tell you something, okay? This is why the Riders Guild does not deserve any kind of extra dollars. If conservatives without a single rider can make a movie just as good, if not 10 times better, why are we paying these riders any money? Tell me that. That man right there, he's a patriot. He doesn't even know how to write. Or read! And he still wrote a script. <laughs> to Quinn's house on purpose, causing Quinn to buy the largest possible American flag and hang it at his house, resulting in this kid and his friends str I love this movie overall because it immediately showcases one of the true pillars of conservatism, which is uh, cultural grievances that you have with libtard children. False victimhood and a ridiculous cultural grievance that requires you to behave in a way that is like completely idiotic. Strapping it to another car and pulling it down. The high school kid then calls Quinn the F slur, so he just shoots him in the arm. Next time I'll shoot you in your knee, give you something to your pants about. Quinn then orders them to put it back up, but they refuse. You really think- Wait, he shot a high school student because he called him the F slur? <laughs> Damn straight he did. America gives me the goddamn, the Second Amendment gives me the goddamn right to do so. Seems kind of like a snowflake. No, he did both. He called the kid the F slur and then shot him. Oh, that's interesting. I was going to say he's based and woke for defending gay rights. Turns out he's calling the kid the F slur and then shooting him. Wait, hold on. I want to see it again. Is that what he said? Pulling it down. The high school kid then calls Quinn the F slur, so. No, high school kid calls him the F slur, so he shoots him. Yeah, no, you're wrong. Well, he just shoots him in the arm. Next time I'll shoot you in your knee, give you something to your pants about. Quinn then orders them to put it back up, but they refuse. You really think I'd have to think twice about shooting you in the nuts, you worthless little turd? In the end, the police swing by, there's a standoff, and the Native American guy's wife ends up blasting Quinn. The final scene shows Quinn going to see his deceased wife, who is a person of color, proving once and for all that every racist white guy has at least one black friend. Oh, okay, I love this. I need to watch, I, you know, a while ago, I used to, this used to be a country. This used to be a real nation. We used to watch movies on this channel. The movies that we used to watch were conservative movies. Conservative movies are created for an audience that looks at Gran Torino and goes, not racist, not racist enough for me. This movie is fucking woke. <laughs> okay. It's got, it's got too, too much of a feel good ending. They're like, oh, Gran Torino. Well, why did he end up aligning with them Asians at the end of it? I don't like it. So they just fucking go and make their own movie where they just only do the racism and never end up solving the uh, antagonism. <laughs> Let's watch this. This is a infidel. 
uh, two years ago it came out. It's another Jim Caviezel production. We're gonna finish it. D'Souza Media? Dinesh D'Souza has a production company? Oh my lord, this is gonna be so good. He's a good people. You wanna know the saddest part about this? If I'm fucking Michael Knowles, if I'm Steven Crowder, fuck it, if I'm Ben Shapiro, and I have a production company, or my friends have production companies, and they don't either star me in their movies, or they don't even use my incredible writing in their scripts, I'm pissed. Ben Shapiro always wanted to be a fucking Hollywood writer. He always wanted to be a Hollywood writer. Now they're making their own movies and they're still not letting Ben write. Michael Knowles always wanted to be an actor. Now, Michael Knowles has the opportunity to star in films because his homies are actually making movies and yet they still don't let him star in it. I wonder why. I've known Mr. Lucini for some time now. Have you ever seen him exhibit extremist behaviors or attitudes? What? The man's Muslim, so you enter his house without a warrant. Islamophobia. Wow, woke CIA once again. Let me guess, the Muslim guy is a really big bad terrorist. So let me guess, his racial fears, his, his racial fears were totally justified. Come with me. He's running a terrorist nerve center or recruitment website. Or am I just an Islamophobe? He won't talk to me anymore. He knows what I saw. I love that already. It's like immediately, it's like sometimes racism is good and valid. Like in this instance. Except if you were to look at like the entire uh, sequence of FBI activity post 9-11, pre 9-11 too, but post 9-11 specifically as it pertains to Islamophobia, all they have done is not this, but the exact opposite of this, which is to find like autistic or uh, mentally disabled Muslim teenagers online in chat rooms and then give them money and goad them into doing an act of terror only to stop them and then permanently arrest them in perpetuity. It's great. And what does that tell you? He is the one that said, go to Cairo, talk about the faith. You're not suspicious? I'm asking you, don't go. I will call you. It's gone viral in the Middle East. Holy shit, is racist Jack Ryan? I mean, Jack Ryan's already pretty fucking racist, so I guess it's a little bit more racist Jack Ryan. But you're preaching to Muslims. Well, I was invited. No, by me, mate. Who's there? Duh! Can you hear me? I'm surprised they didn't do that. hi -ya, hi -ya! Like the... Anytime they show like Egypt or any sort of Middle Eastern country, they do the drum, but then there's like the Ezan, which they didn't do this time, which is surprising. International incident. He was kidnapped. This is terrorism. Woke, woke fema female CIA agent you trying to stop way. you. And he's gonna stay that way. We're great. You gotta get him out. They're working on it, right? The, the, the government. Not a chance. The days of Entebbe are long over. As far as the law's concerned, you did it very. I can't give up on it. He's here, your husband. Your CIA, the two of you set him up. Does he act as if nothing happened in Virginia? Try to get me arrested. I came here to plead for his life. It is clear. You are an American spy. I didn't come here to watch you die. We're not afraid to die. That's why we're going to win. Yeah, it's supposed to be anti-woke because it calls out radical Islamic terrorism. Hollywood has been using Middle Eastern actors to represent terrorist criminals for decades. Yeah, not good enough, brother. Uh, it also is twofold because it also shows uh, woke CIA women, like how women in the CIA uh, ruined the CIA by being woke. So it's a twofer. I'm not afraid either. God, I, we got to watch this one. 
Why isn't his wife barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? I don't like this movie. Yeah, too woke. I've lived in Egypt for a while, and it does not look like that. Yeah, bet you would say that as a sympathizer of terror, acting like that's not exactly what Egypt looks like. Fucking got him. That's also what Turkey looks like. See, I am not pro-terror, so I will tell you the truth. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go in the Middle East, there is that same filter. There's a minute filter. It's kind of similar to the, the release date is when? 9-11? Is that when they released it? I love that. July 4th, 9-11. These guys got it right. Let's look at the comments. Literally one of the best movies I've seen this year. Action packed suspense. Love everything about this movie. Jim is one hell of an actor. I like that Jim stands up for what he believes. He was absolutely awesome in The Passion of Christ. He hasn't caved in the Holly Wicked. He hasn't sold his soul. Such an eye-opener for, like, warm Christians and ecumenical preachers. What? God bless you, Jim, and also the producers of the infidel movie. Wait, finally, finally, these fucking warm Christians and ecumenical preachers get their comeuppance by seeing the reality of all these other religions. <laughs> the reality of Islam. Finally, they, they will learn. It took Jim 22 years to make two mainstream movies. I mean, you got to put respect on, on Jim, okay? He was in Passion of the Christ, so that was a pretty mainstream movie. What is this? Middle East and Hollywood? Oh, yeah, this is my favorite short. This is exactly what I mean. All right, how the fuck do I move this? Actually, I'm going to keep going. Bizarre scene, too. You gotta hit the bizarre scene. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> uh, the one dimensional black character only there to give funny ones. Welcome, my friend. Damn, it's hot. I'm like R. Kelly in Disneyland. <laughs> Kevin Hart reference. Oh, it's good. Jim's best movie, unironically, was a movie where his wife was killed by a serial killer that used his car as a weapon, and guess how Jim gets revenge? That's right, with his own cool car. It's called Highwayman, and it's incredible and stupid. AI can't compete with this? What do you mean? You could make this in AI.